thank you very much, Dr. Salky and Sages, for um, for letting me present some of the uh, of, of the experiences with hand ass hand assisted and, and laparoscopic restorative proctocolectomy. And of course, the uh, great debate is uh, those who are here for the first half of the session uh, is is and you've heard a little bit about hand assist is what is uh, what is the benefit? Well, we all know about the advantages of, of laparoscopic colorectal surgery, less post-operative pain, shorter length of hospital stay, decreased convalescence, improved cosmesis. We've seen the data hashed out several times. But what are the critics really saying? And, uh, you know, they're saying it's often too complex for routine use, inconsistent clinical outcomes. Boy, it, it takes forever. I can get I can do 12 right hemicolectomies open uh, if, as opposed to one laparoscopic, and I do it through a tiny incision. We all know that you lose our depth perception going from, th work, we work in a 3D world, but have to use 2D um, uh, uh, images. It's a large specimen, as we've just seen uh, quite eloquently on the last video. And the instruments are really limited. It's reduced degrees of freedom. We don't have a wrist action unless you're using a robotic type of an instrument. Uh, less tactile feedback, uh, traumatic, the, you know, the instruments can tear if you're not really careful, and there's excessive instrument traffic. You saw the first, you know, some of the discussions, seven trocars for, for, a, uh, for an operation. Well, what about the hand? Well, the, uh, the hand is our favorite instrument. Um, uh, Tom Reed said yesterday, it, we were all born with it. We remember what our hands are. It's easy to find it, um, and, uh, and it's hard to lose it. Um, hand, and why not use the hand assist? And it was first looked at by the, the HALS study group back in 2000. Um, and, and first of all, what is HALS? We need to talk a little bit about that and how do we define it because it's a little bit nebulous sometimes what it's used for. But basically, it's a surgeon's hand inserted through the abdominal wall. And it's designed to facilitate the dissection and retraction without disturbing the aperitoneum. Um, and so what it's supposed to do is it, it, it combines the ease of open surgery uh, with the benefits of minimally invasive procedures. Now, for colorectal surgery, it seems to be a natural match. We need to make an extraction anyway, an extraction site anyway, so the incision needs to be made. And laparoscopic instruments are still quite limited, as we know, and our hand is our most trusted and versatile instrument. And, and having your hand in there helps restore tactile feedback and depth perception. And it allows you to use it as a multitasking instrument digital uh, blunt dissection, traction, counter-traction, control of hemorrhage, oftentimes doing multiple things at the same time. Um, the instruments themselves, uh, there's several of them out there. I'll show you some pictures. They have to be, allow for easy passage of the hand in and out of the abdominal cavity. You'd like it to protect the wound also uh, uh, um, dur during the extraction portion of the procedure, and especially if you're doing an operation for cancer. It has to maintain pneumoperitoneum, not only with your hand in, but with your hand out. And it would be really nice if we can, uh, as we talked about, use it for an extraction site, um, and as well as for an instrument port. So the original devices, there's many of them, but the HAL study group um, used the hand, the hand port. Um, and this is unfortunately a very bulky instrument, as you can see. Once you create pneumoperitoneum, there's this large silo it's affixed to your wrist, so you really can only have one hand in uh, during one procedure. Um, so it's a real bulky instrument. That was, um, that was supplanted by two instruments that are now commercially available, the gel port, uh, which is now on its third, uh, 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 third generation. Um, and again, here is it showing an instrument going through it. And then there's the lap disc, which is uh, um, just about to come out with its uh, a, a newer version. So those are what's available to the surgeon. Um, there's really only one published randomized controlled trial uh, that, that uh, with a single institution, small group of patients in each arm showing the difference. This was for left and right colons. Uh, they did use a medial to lateral approach. It was a lot of patients with cancer. And the, the study basically showed that the hand assist did, you know, as we've seen before, it's safe and feasible, saved a little bit of time over the uh, uh, over the laparoscopic group. Complications were the same. Conversion rate uh, was somewhat interesting because in the laparoscopic assisted group, they allowed the surgeons to convert first to hand assist. If they couldn't complete a hand assist, then to convert to open. And they found that, uh, that two thirds of their patients who were gonna be converted to open could be salvaged just by putting a hand in. 
and getting you over that critical, critical difficult portion of the procedure that was going to make you convert. So they found a pretty uh, significant benefit to having a house, house device even in the patients that they weren't planning on using it to begin with. So compared with lap, straight laparoscopic procedures, operative times are marginally shorter. It is helpful in difficult situations. It doesn't have any additional disadvantages, uh, and it really doesn't seem to be any more costly. So as we've been talking about this, after, uh, this morning, is that what are the two procedures we do this procedure for? The vast majority are for ulcerative colitis, the restorative proctocolectomy. A couple patients with FAP, it's much less common. Uh, we talk about two-stage procedures most of the time, and the first stage being a total proctocolectomy with the creation of an ileal J-pouch reservoir, and most of us use a protecting loop ileostomy. And in those who do use ileostomy, we come back for a second operation to do ileostomy reversal. And this is a really challenging operation. You've got to mobilize the entire colon. You've got to manage this very large specimen, as, you, as you've seen again, four-quadrant operation. You've got to detach the omentum, a vascularized structure. It's not easy to come across that with just cauter. You've got to often have some vessel sealing device. It's a risk of hemorrhage. Um, you've got large multiple vessels. You have to dissect, especially if you're doing them intracorporeally. You see uh, low pelvic dissection. I mean, this, is, this whole thing just goes on and on as this is a really complicated operation. Um, so it's a, could we get a benefit by using a hand? Well, there's a couple things we also have to look at, especially when we're looking at the literature, is what operation is being done. We've seen there's, there's a hand assist. There's a couple different ways to do this procedure. One is straight laparoscopic, where you're doing uh, just about every, all the mobilization and maybe the vascular division with a uh, laparoscopic technique, and then you use your extraction site to retrieve the specimen, create your pouch, and create your anastomosis. Um, and the hybrid operation is one in which you do the colon portion of the procedure laparoscopically, and then you open, and you open your fan and steel incision or lower midline incision and do the rectal portion of the procedure and dissection open. And that's termed a hybrid laparoscopic restorative proctocolectomy. And you read the literature, you need to kind of see whether you're comparing apples to apples or you're comparing apples to oranges. Um, and so same with straight laparoscopic. What if we add the HALS device? Those can also be done. Straight laparoscopic with HALS assist or straight laparoscopic with the colon, HALS assist with the colon, but then you use the hand assist device, you pop the top off or you open it up and you go through the house device to do the proctectomy. So uh, again, keep an eye on what you're reading. Um, there isn't too much in the literature. We're going to take a look at the uh, Leahy data here. David Rivadonera and uh, Peter Marcello uh, published their group. And this is a very experienced surgeon, done over 300 laparoscopic cases, all straight laparoscopic, and then switched to hand-assisted surgery. And you heard Dr. Marcello talking earlier this morning. Uh, 13 patients with conventional laparoscopic or straight laparoscopic, followed by 10 patients with hand assist. They used the hybrid technique, a needle lateral approach and fan and steel incision. And you've seen this data earlier, but basically the OR time was uh, significantly shorter and the length of stay and complication rates were, were identical. What they felt though, again, is safe and feasible. It's quick and easy to learn. It's not immediate to learn, but he thought he could learn to do it in about five cases. And the most important parts of the, of the simplification came that it was easier to mobilize the colon and to separate the omentum from the colon when you're coming across the transverse colon. Uh, he, they felt that increased tactile feedback and improved spatial relationships are, were also uh, more preserved compared to straight laparoscopic surgery and the, the digital blunt dissection uh, and basically just having this big, you know, we're not a five or 10 millimeter instrument, this is about a 40 millimeter instrument or more 50 millimeter instrument. Um, the Mayo Group has, uh, has published the largest restorative proctocolectomy data, um, and we've already looked a little bit at the subset of those patients. Now, 75 of the 100 laparoscopic patients were done straight laparoscopic. 25% of them were performed with the hand assist device. Again, it was during a transition, so these sur surgeons were just uh, getting experience with it. The operative time was considerably more and I'm not sure if it's because this was all done more as a hybrid and this was done as a straight laparoscopic procedure, um, but there was not a benefit for the length of stay um, uh, and clearly not a benefit for operative times. Uh, I'm curious to see if things have come down in times and if, as their experience has improved. 
Uh, we've already seen the laparoscopic versus open data are all pretty similar. So the question that was posed here, comparing hand assisted versus laparoscopic restorative proctocolectomy, is there a difference in the outcome? Well, current answer with the literature and the is is no. However, this debate is ongoing and it's unlikely to it's unlikely to subside anytime soon. Um, and I'm not I certainly agree that the data neither advocates for nor discourages against hand assist laparoscopy. Um, and you know, a couple of the questions to ask, are we using the appropriate metrics? Is it, are we asking, you know, a lot of these people say the surgeon feels a lot better, is a lot more comfortable with the procedure, is a little bit more relaxed. Do we have metrics to measure surgeons, the surgeon's benefit? Because I'll tell you, we all are adamant about whether we do a double layer or a single layer or a different type of silk versus vicryl, and no one's gonna change you, but there's no data to support one or the other. And that's been going on for eons, and the same thing's going to go on here, and why do we use these things? We don't really have all the metrics. Um, also, when, when is the house device utilized? You know, do we do you use it for the whole case? No, you take a break, you know, sigmoid mobilization with a hand assist in the, in the fan and steel position, that hand is in the way. Get it out, make sure you don't use it at that point. You know, use, use the device when it's necessary. The other thing is when, uh, when does the surgeon choose to use the house device? Is it routine, every single case? Um, I, think, I think that everyone does it a little differently. A lot of people are using it to get over their learning curve, as Dr. Marcello brought up in the panel discussion early this morning. There's also people that have it on the shelf and just use it as a bridge for conversion. That's a great use for the, for the device. And, uh, or use it selectively in your difficult cases. Uh, Use a technique where you just go in with the laparoscope first, take a look around, see what their previous adhesions look like, see how the, what the extent of the disease is, and see if you can use it selectively and figure out, uh, use it like any other instrument. If it's going to be beneficial for this patient, great, but you may not need to use it for everything. The next question, is HALS a useful tool in the armamentarium of the laparoscopic surgeon? And it depends on who is asking the question. Uh, the experienced laparoscopic surgeon at a high volume center uh, well, that, that person has extensive experience. That person probably has a seasoned first assistant or an, ex, an advanced fellow or, or, a, or a partner who's done a, a, a lot of this work. And they have a very experienced OR team, most likely. And so I think maybe it's not necessary for this person. Well, if it's a modestly experienced laparoscopic surgeon, well, they have less exposure to the procedures. There may still be ascending the learning curve. They probably have a less experienced team. They may not have a good first assistant. They find restorative proctocolectomy extremely challenging, and they don't see a lot of it. And so I definitely think that that person is a resounding yes. I think the hand assist will be a useful uh, adjunct in that situation. So in summary, I think that HALS does combine the benefits of open and laparoscopic surgery. It uh, results are similar. It is easier and less time consuming in certain situations, may shorten the learning curve. It does allow for an alternative conversion in difficult cases. And it's selectively used on tough cases. And every surgeon in this room has a different definition and a different level of comfort and should use it when they consider something a tough case, not when someone else considers it a tough case. So thank you very much. Appreciate the time. <laughs>